path I haven't tried. Let's look up this one. Just at the bridge at the bottom. I have to climb this hill yet to get some sculpture here on a prime point. Here a nice shot. So gorge goes right back. I think we've found a good spot. I wonder what was up this track. Here's a castle from this side which I've never seen. Look at this then for a view. A magnificent one. A view I'll have to paint sometime. Eh? A bit too dark today for a good photo. We need more light. Another sculpture on the way across this lovely view. Now the sun is out just a little bit. We've got more light and colour. Just wondering about coming up here to paint. It's a long way to walk. So we're on our way back down the hill now. Way back. It's that lovely stone wall again. again. I've got this rather lovely photograph I've just uh, made up of the composite of nine photographs and they were wide angle looking over the valley at Crozon at the ruins there. I obviously would like to go up there and paint on plein air but at the moment the weather's changed to autumn and it's gone very rainy and wet and so damp. I can't get up there but it's such an interesting composition and a series of textures and colours that I, I feel I'm having a go at it quite loosely not to try to make too photographic representation of the photograph but trying to take it further into a painting. And as it's such fine detail, it's not going to be that easy. Uh, I may have to do some more photographs, uh, do some more prints of the smaller areas of the photographs to get the details on such a big scale. Or I'll be here using a magnifying glass. Anyway, let's see. We've got a wonderful sky to do on this. Well, here we are, ready to go. The drawing is done. Now, I'll try not to get in your way as much as possible, but it's not going to be that easy. Right, I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to be uh, in more traditional probably in this one than um, looser and abstract as I am when I'm out, outside. I, I really want to enjoy this uh, wonderful sky here, um, which actually is uh, well, it's quite a spectacular one. And, I, and, and I've got to go way beyond the photograph here because the photograph just bleaches back with the colours to uh, silver greys and a lot of white greys. I want to find the colours in this. So I'm going to be using a lot of uh, colour hues, the warm and cools of uh, yellow for instance with the lemon yellows for the cools and the lights and warm, working through to um, yellow ochres and warmer greys. So let's have a nice big brush. Uh, what size shall I start with? I think um, that one should do it, about a three quarter inch. It's going to take some working out. Um, where am I going to start? I'm actually going to start with some of these more mid greys. I'm going to start with putting white into the palette as I usually do with a lighter colour and adding a little bit of yellow ochre to that just to get started. It's um, some beautiful colours in this but a bit too bright. Beautiful colours. I'm going to now add some cerulean blue to that if I can find it. Might a little bit of magenta into that. That's really Start to try and find these these colours. Try and work these colours out. I'm going to put the marks even now about the clouds that I'm painting. Just delicate strokes. Uh, that's why I like these nylon filberts because you can be very delicate with them just by tickling them on. So I really want to find these these colours to dash it up. This lovely silvery light going over through here. Let's just blend these together with the tip of the brush. Again, this is why a filbert's nice for this sort of work. 
I want to put big block colours on, but I'm going to work, I would use a flap, and I want to work more traditionally on this at the moment. So it's quite a figurative piece, this one. I don't want to go too light yet, because I want these lovely lighter colours later to play against this, so my colours have dried out quite a bit since I've been working out of doors. I might have to replace the palette before I go away. You can see the differences in those pinks and colours even now. Coming over there now. Comes right through to there. Love painting skies like this because you can really find the colours. So you can see, you know, I'm having to really find this colour. I to really look through this paint, this photograph, and <clears throat> drag this colour out. This is a background for this. A bit more blue than that. And softly, deftly, just blend them through and in with the tip of the brush. They've got to be more purple in a moment. More pink in there. Touch of water, we don't want to too heavy this. That's nice, that's nice, that's, that's a nice pink grey coming through. There. That's whatever it is. Nice bit of grovely. Into my painting there, but having that, I can get more water. Let's continue here with this pink grey that's coming on down into here, and a bit more of the pink into it, of course. It's a lovely colour, bl stronger blue into it now. I'm going to get a bit more cerulean into it. Even use your finger if you have to. Cloths doesn't matter what you use, providing it works. There's no cheating as long as it works. There's no you have to do it this way to make it more difficult for yourself or anything else. No, nothing like that. No rush on this. I haven't got to rush the no daylight disappearing. I can, I can gently work these colours up as I like. Pinks first of all. And so it must be done while it's still wet. So you've got me talking right through this one. This is a bit more of a lesson because you can actually see what I'm doing here at the end of the brush. Right, I've got to start on stronger colours, a bit of um, turquoise down here now to make things quite different. Again, just blending these colours in now. Here we go, I've got to start on warmer blue. So back again to my cerulean and a wee touch of cobalt. And we're going to start up on this now here from the greeny blues through into the stronger. The easel rattling about with my rapid brush strokes. Now warmer. So I'm going to come now to some stronger cobalt. And you see the difference that makes now. It makes that blue below look so cool. Cool man. Tip of the brush, pushing the colour in together, tickling it in together, gradually there, strong colour there, and whack it up. I haven't even touched my ultramarine yet, which I'm going to do. Get stronger in a moment. I need to go back in that previous colour first though, just bring a bit of that blue coming into here. A little bit stronger again, a bit more ultramarine into there, just up here at the edges especially. 
you need to find the colours and as say photographs are so bleached out. You do need to find them. That could touch more ultramarine than that. Doesn't take much. Tiny touches of colour just to bring this out. As they say you can tell when a painting's been done from a photograph. Let us hope that what I'm doing here is going to dispel that myth a little bit. Right, onto the softer greys. First time now, then a little touch of burnt sienna to go into that mix of cobalt and white and lemon and yellow ochre and uh, we've we'll, got to start on these lovely clouds here now which are about here this lovely grey see the smashing grey that makes a little bit of that sienna into that blue it'll give me right water not too much just on the tip of the brush we'll start to blend this carefully these colours bring them up, the tip of the brush bring them up from here into, into the sky, into the surrounding clouds. Right down through. And the same again, bring it across here to these clouds here. Softly at first, we're going to go a bit darker in a moment. Right, a little bit stronger, so the same. With a slightly deeper blue and a wee touch of the burnt sienna, white. Now back to the water again, clean the brush and not too much water, just enough to, to subtly blend. That's nice, that's better. I was just saying about going a bit pinker down the bottom here. It's Again it's bleached out you see on the actual photograph. It's um, You've got to take several photographs, one of the sky, one of the um, the landscape and one of the foreground. So on. if you don't what happens is you uh, the camera can't handle light and dark to that degree and you get these huge jumps between of either very dark In the sky, or very light in the sky, and move it one, one to the other. They can't just simply can't handle it. A light source here, gently coming out through into across here. Now white and lemon yellow, which is a much much cooler light. And let's just see what happens when we start to build some of that in and around here. Just how light and where. Do you want that light really shining or not? That'd be subtle enough as it is. There's bits of light here and there. Okay, we'll leave that at that. And we'll see how that works a bit later. I still think maybe I need a little stronger. Um, in this top right, I'm going to go a little bit more purple, just a little bit touch of purple into there. I'll take my stand back sometime and just see these things. I think we're, we're getting that effect now. This is a little bit of cobalt now with the white. It's not as pink as you think. And again make the edges about the tree straight away. If it's a broken edge, you make it a broken edge with your, with your brush straight away. And now we can start to see the sky against it and the sky will become much more subtle and softer. I've got some close-up photographs, or I've got some photographs in more detail of these things I'm going to use, obviously. 
I need to lose this um, white canvas, but at the same time I've got to uh, leave my drawing underneath. So I'm just I'm using thin washes at the moment just to coat this. And we'll start to get some colour tinting into here. Colour in, yes, great fun. Brush marks always about what you're doing if you're doing a figurative picture like this. I believe that to be the best way. Well, that's rather a nuisance. I just realised the battery had gone. It's a faulty battery, and I don't know how much I've missed. We haven't seen, um, but I've just been working up the whole of these background colours, possibly uh, even not having seen them at all. What a shame. Anyway, what I've done is just worked up the basic tones and colour hues just so I can get rid of all the white and see where I'm going with this. This brushwork again, using the almost dry brush techniques in places to, to find these lovely mossy textures and things that I have to go back in and use a lot more detail. I want an overall feeling of wandless. I don't want to, but unfortunately. Uh, I'm going on to a smaller fill but now, about a quarter inch. I'm going to start picking out these lovely details here. See how I can gradually work up these medium tones over the, the darks. If you're an avid fan and watch, I'm using more impressionist, but what I'm doing is the same thing, putting the right colours in the right places, hopefully in the right shapes, and this thing is gradually starting to appear. Back with the water again to just blend things a bit and make the place a little sharp edge there. Don't put these very sharp. And see if we can bring the warms out a little bit. Some of that lovely pink we were using earlier and 
just add a wee bit of yellow to it. Just want to see what we can do about the sunlight on these areas. Which I think can be brought out a bit more yet. a tapestry of beautiful marks and touches and colours happening on tops of these trees. Now then, I might have to go back to bigger brushes for the moment because I need to go and uh, work on this foreground now and I want to use a slightly bigger stroke on these spots. Maybe coming to detail later but just for the moment pinks and blues of all sorts which will play against that delicate background. I thought it would be an explosive and powerful painting. I think it's going to be. Some beautiful colours and textures in this, isn't there? As I say, you don't normally see me painting as finely as this, so I hope this is a treat for you, and not boring. But uh, it's nice to, it's raining outside, it's nice to get inside and do a bit of um, you know, teaching. Really. Let's just get the brown and greens going a bit more. A bit of bouncy in there. And that's fine, some of these are much richer. Down we go again. A break and uh, Working on the foreground still. Let's find, find these beautiful colours here. Lots of textures going on. In fact, I'm tempted to use a sponge on this because there are so many lovely textures. In fact, let's just do a bit of that. I've got a, a nice sponge here. It's perfect for the job. I just want to see how that will work. Let's take a big brush. And we'll take some the Prussian. And a wee bit of that very deep green. Crush and deep green. Maybe a touch of the purple just to get it darker. I still want more of that Prussian. A little bit of water. And let's see what that does, shall we? So we'll take a nice cool sponge, just the job for this. And I want to see about texturing up here. Job right down to there, up into here. I would have liked to have kept with a brush, really. It's sort of, I said, there's something in my mind, mindset that just says, Oh, this is just a bit technique -y. But if it gives the effects that I want, well, I'll say there's no cheating, we're going to go for what we can. Right, what I'm going to play with now is called a rake brush. You'll see it here. With the filaments in between, <coughs> the spaces in between, and I want to have a go at pulling out some of this gorgeous uh, grasses down through here, across to some of the grasses here. I've got smaller ones if I need to use them, but this will be alright because I can use an individual brush to ordinary point just to bring out some of these areas shortly. You can use it short like this as well. Give little strokes to just feel the edges of the grass. Now then, the obvious one is yellow ochre again, but I'm going to use some yellow ochre, then I'm going to mix a lighter colour. So I'm going to start with lovely brushes, these breaks. You can get them as combs as well, which are much finer. For this job I want to rake. I thought I had one in my set, but I've had to take one of my watercolour ones out, it's a bit of a nuisance. Okay, now I want a much lighter yellow. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow, a little touch of lemon, a wee touch of white, and this should be much, much lighter and more yellow. We'll get some of that going into here.
Now a bit of um, orange, some Cadmium orange. And we're really starting to build up some of the warmer colours now. And we'll start to bring this forward a bit by having some warmer colours here in the foreground than are in the background. So I'll push those blues back and bring these other colours out. These textures will be like that. Now it's a bit dry. Come on, keep it wetter. I want to get texturing at the end of the brush. That's it, like this little bits of texturing. Let's go back to the um, trees here. Lots of ones in my conversation today. Back to the um, let's go back to the um, trees, um, trees. in the foreground. Try a little bit of black here and just really bring the foreground forward a bit. I say black and white to the very end when I really feel I've got to use it because I can't use a darker colour. I want to really slab some colour in here. I'm losing a bit of the, the vibrance somehow that I need. Struggling and painting at some stage, and I'm struggling right now a bit, but I'll get there. So we can work from photographs, but really, really, I feel got to pull the colours out. We've got to find these colours in here and not just be limited by the dyes as they come to us most obviously. Well, kind of dark as, I, as light as I want with that. I've got to go back to the darks again and bring out I'm going to use a, a deep sub green now which is a warm green just to find these lovely until almost every space has been licked by the brush if you like Now it's just a matter of the old mark here or there to really just try and balance everything out. I'm a dark to see, I may have to do a bit more tomorrow, but I think I'm about there. And back to the bright green. Not very, very bright green in there. I think about that just now and didn't do anything about it. Let's get some white and look at this very, very bright. Quite green that comes down just here. Don't do it. Sort of, uh, like a fencing match at this stage, you're just going backwards and forwards, finding these. What do you think of that? Hey, I, I'm quite pleased with that. Interesting things work. Or dark even. It comes to it, just where they are. Take it down and well, that's my first large studio piece for a while. Looking over the uh, ruins of Crozon, interesting walk of the day. I'd love to go and paint it on fly now, maybe next year. I don't think there's going to be a time this year, but nonetheless, fun to do. And you see me using a different style again of actually building up with fine glazes and fine work. But I've got more time like this. Mm -hmm.